And it's, it's particularly crucial at that sentencing stage that counsel for the defendant be up to the job and be strong, able, experienced, uh, just as it is to have a vigorous prosecutor. And most everybody who's convicted uh, and faces the death penalty gets a good lawyer. Somewhere late down the road in the appeals process, but by that time, uh, all you can do is try to try to show that something went wrong. A friend of mine who's a lawyer here got into the uh, into a death penalty appeals case, came over to talk to me about it, and I said, "Do you think if you'd been representing him in the trial, he would have been found not guilty?" And he said, "No." He said, "He's guilty." But he said, if I'd been representing him, he wouldn't have gotten the death penalty. Alan was arrested in 1995 for a murder that allegedly took place April the 3rd. The victim's body was discovered 11 days later on April the 14th. These dates are critical because Allen has an airtight alibi from April the 4th through April the 20th. We now know that 17 people told police and prosecutors that they saw the victim, Allen Ray Jenkins, alive after April the 3rd, when he was allegedly to have died. Had my son's defense attorneys been told of the information by police and prosecutors that would have been, they would have been able to prove that Allen is innocent. My son has a right to this information, but the prosecutors did not provide it, even after a court order. In December last year, a judge faulted prosecutors and police for withholding the evidence and overturned Allen's sentence. Now he is awaiting a new trial, and I am certain that Allen will be acquitted. In fact, the evidence that Allen is innocent is so overwhelming that we hope and pray that the charges will be dropped. To the legislators who say our death penalty system works, I ask that you look at what five years on death row has done to my son, to me, and to my family. There, there are many of us who think that juries are imposing the death penalty because they think that life imprisonment doesn't really mean life imprisonment. They, they think life imprisonment means that the defendant will get out of prison at some future time, maybe sooner than they would like to see him get out or her. And the only way they can ensure uh, that this particular defendant does not commit another crime is to sentence him to death. The ABA also was concerned with the independence of the courts in reviewing capital cases once a person had been convicted and sentenced to death. If I had my way, I would establish a 24-month appellate process. And at the end of 24 months, after you've exhausted all the appeals, and every court at every level would have to hear an appeal immediately. There would not be this sitting on a case a year and a half before you hear the appeal. You hear the appeal, rule on it. After 24 months, if the person is appeal is not in their favor, then at the end of that 25th month they would be executed. That was a game that the defense was playing or it was, you know, some type of strategy they were using to throw me off. That's what I thought in 1987. Yeah, he heard somebody say somebody else had done it. Well, come on. This is just another ploy. Nobody in prison is guilty. They'll all tell you they're innocent. So I don't think Anyone could tell you with confidence that everyone who is convicted of anything in North Carolina was guilty of it. And that's why we have an appeals process, and that's why even years after some people are convicted, uh, evidence arises that sets them free. Our death penalty statute is too all-encompassing. I think jury selection needs to be substantially revised. I think the judges really ought to drive home to the juries that if you sentence this man to life imprisonment without possibility of the parole, that means he will never get out of prison. We've really funded criminal justice and capital work on the cheap, 
And these are life and death decisions. There will always be an opportunity to present ev evidence of innocence. And certainly a better study would be helpful. And then I think you also have to look at the cases uh, of people already on death row uh, and determine whether any of those cases have been plagued by the kinds of problems that you've determined uh, undermine uh, the fairness of the system. Because those are likely to be the cases where there are going to be major problems, including the possibility of innocent people. Have there not been innocent people that have been executed? Oh, I'm sure there have. Do we want to talk about it and face it? I'm sure we don't. If time goes on, this state will probably execute an innocent person. I'd hope that never happens, but it is, and some businesses, they say, that's one of the hazards of doing business. People just say, well, violence, some, bit, some people are going to get killed, some innocent folk are going to get executed, we're doing the best we can. That's not a high enough standard for me. And I'm just not willing to have any innocent people uh, executed. Nor do I think we ought to have a system where some people are executed for crimes that other people get life imprisonment or less for. And that to me is simply not acceptable in terms of the fundamental fairness that we expect of our judicial system. Without question, every single one of the murders for which nearly 160 inmates have been sentenced to die, they're all horrendous. They're all horrendous crimes. And left behind, of course, are the loved ones who will forever have a hole in their heart as a result of the loss. But my review of capital punishment over the past three years is not about how, how bad the nature of the crimes that have been committed. They're all bad. My review is of the mistakes, the mistakes made in the system that put innocent people on death row and nearly put them in the execution chamber. You would have to think that uh, North Carolina is the luckiest state in the Union uh, if the problems that plague the death penalty in Maryland and Illinois don't plague the death penalty in North Carolina. I mean, we're just not that different. The extent to which the problems exist may be different, but the same problems because we have basically the same system. We have the same approach. Some of the people who spoke in favor of the resolution were people who supported the death penalty without question. People who favor the death penalty want it to be enforced fairly, uh, and they don't want innocent people found guilty. I think that's the responsible position for people who support the death penalty to take. On Wednesday morning, January 30th, 1985, my eight-year-old daughter, Jean, left home to walk to school four blocks away. She was found later that morning, several miles from home, molested, murdered, hung from a little limb. So when I learn about innocent people on death row, I wonder what went wrong in those cases. I don't believe anybody set out to execute an innocent individual. I keep thinking there must be some small mistake that somehow got compounded in the process and led to a potentially tragic result. What could be wrong with delaying further executions until we find out how the mistakes happen and what we can do to restore justice to the system? I think the absolute worst thing that could happen for a victim uh, would be for the state to carry out an execution in that person's name and it turned out that the person executed was innocent. I think that our first obligation to a victim is to get the right person and to prosecute that person uh, in a trial that is fair. I think that's our obligation to the victim. I think that's our obligation to each other. And I think that the system that we have now is so broken that we can't even give that assurance. And the question is going to be, whether the public officials who are responsible for administering the death penalty in North Carolina are going to step up to their obligation to actually lead on this issue and to be able to assure the public uh, that the system uh, is, is, is fair 
in and therefore that they are safe. And I think the governor and the attorney general have to do the same thing with the death penalty. They support it, and so their obligation now is to assure the public that it's fair uh, and that it is being carried out in a way uh, that ensures that the people who are convicted and sentenced to death in fact are the people who are guilty of the crime. And we should be leading the world on issues like this. And we're bringing up the rear. <laughs>